What's up, guys? We're back on the booze cruise. Um, it's kind of a shitty day for recording. The weather's terrible. Uh, it's like super foggy. It looks like a zombie apocalypse out here. Um, and because of that, uh, it's cold out. I want to be inside, but then the generator would be running, so I can't really film that well. So I'd probably be jumping back and forth between being inside and outside throughout the day, depending on how cold I get and how much filming I'm doing. This is the part that I kind of want to document a lot of because it's an interesting part. <sighs> so right now, the engine's mounted. Did that last time. Uh, we've got the transmission semi in place. We've got a belt that almost fits. We're probably gonna drop the length a little bit so that we don't max out the rears uh, of the engine's travel for tension. So I'll probably drop that size down a little bit. Um, but we've only got one of the transmission mounts in right here. Um, and the other side's been held up by a jack stand. Basically just did that so I can start, you know, figuring out the site picture of where that's placed in re relation to where we're gonna push the jack shaft um, down there. So that should work out right now with how everything's lining up. You know, that second sprocket that you can see right there, gonna drive that one underneath, hopefully. Um, like I said, we can always drop this jack shaft onto the bottom side and then we'll have plenty of room just in case, you know, The chain snaps, you know, you don't want to just take out a huge chunk of the case or something, or the transmission case. If this, if this the chain from this sprocket to the back jack shaft snaps or something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some more transmission mounts. Really what I'm planning to do is make them so they're, they're not like right up against the transmission. Um, like this one's touching, but I know that the, the transmission isn't gonna come anymore this way. Uh, if, if anything, to adjust it so its alignment is perfect, it's gonna be going away from where I'm standing right now. So I'm gonna give like a little bit of space on all the mounting bolts. So that way, you know, I can just put a couple washers in between, you know, maybe like an eighth of an inch, 16th, so that, you know, I've got some play in the alignment in case, you know, it turns out I'm burning belts left and right. And it's because the transmission's not perfectly aligned with the uh, the primary clutch. It looks pretty good right now. The belt has a twist in it, so it's super. It's not. <laughs> it's not a good way to align it right now. It looks like the transmission needs to go back that way more. But I'm rambling. A few moments later. Okay guys, we didn't get a time lapse in there of making this transmission mount because I left my SD card at home for my GoPro, so no time lapse. Uh, but basically, I did a little bit of cardboard cutout to determine that guy. Um, tacked it all in place, did a couple nasty MIG welds, and we've got a second transmission mount. Um, it's pretty sturdy, it doesn't really move at all. You know, when I give it a little push. So we'll weld that all up once we're certain on the positioning of the transmission. Uh, these two, the secondary and the primary clutch should be pretty much perfect uh, on this axis, but left and right, they're probably not quite lined up and back and forth like this, they might be off a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, this one, it's really hard to build adjustments in for that in the, uh, you know, with just bolt holes. It's simply not really easy to do. So hopefully it's good enough. It looks pretty straight. Uh, moving on. So I tacked that all in place. Now we're going to work on tacking and mounting this jack shaft a little bit. <clears throat> so here's what I've been trying to describe for the last two months to people who ask me. Um, as you can see, I, I made a wiring harness and extended that up to the front a couple nights, well, a couple weeks ago now. Um, so, belt drives that, that spins 
this sprocket, see? And then that sprocket spins this shaft, that shaft spins that sprocket, that sprocket and chain spin this one. It's that simple. Um, oh God, let's see if I can get a good shot of this. Oh, I don't think that's a great shot of it. <laughs> All right, so we'll edit that out. Okay, here we go. So that chain that's going across right there, um, it's got plenty of room. It's like three inches of room and I'm good with that because I don't want to fuck with anything else. So, so essentially we will get back to working. I'll check back in once I got a couple mounts for this jack shaft. Three hours later. All right, another check-in. <clears throat> We've got the jack shaft mounted up pretty good. Um, this is a chain guard for the, the chains, obviously, because we don't want it to s break and smack into the engine and do damage. Um, but it was just a fender off the original trailer that I rebent. All right, so. Okay, so here's what we got going on. We've got two mounts, one on the bottom, one on the top. Well, one on the side, not really the top. Um, these two are kind of obsolete. I'm probably going to cut those off. Um, I could have just gotten a, like a, a simple pillow block bearing with two bolts. But if it's mounted like this, I can I, I drilled a bunch of holes and then filed it down. And now I've got a slot so I can ten uh, tension and untension the chain, which is nice. Um, for the jack shaft, I only did it once. I only did it on this side because I was too lazy to do the whole process again on the other. Um, I just pulled the chain as tight as I could and then tacked it in place. And if we need to add a spring, like sprocket tensioner, we'll do that on the drive side. <clears throat> so let me walk around to the side. Okay, so we're on the other side of the machine now. You see the wiring harness is slightly in the way but when you've got the chain guard in the way, uh, there, it's not a problem anymore. So the um, drive chain is super smooth, which I really like. Um, you know, it's, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. It's spinning that sprocket right there, which I'm gonna make a chain for. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, everything else is just gonna be making brackets, finishing tacks. Um, the alignment, you know, on the transmission secondary to the primary on the engine seems to be okay. I mean, there is a little bit of an optical effect because I've got the wide angle on the camera, um, but it looks good. And like on the transmission mount here, you know, there's that big of a spacer. So if anything, this, this transmission needs to get shifted that way. So you remove that and it can move over as much as that spacer allows. And then I can just flop the spacer onto the other side. All right, so I'm going to keep working ahead. Uh, I'm going to do some finish welds. I like how everything is looking. Uh, and I don't know where this video is going to end with what progress. And unfortunately, I don't have like any building montage. Um, so maybe I'll do some more stuff. And uh, when I get my GoPro and that'll be part of the video as well. 2,000 years later. What's up guys? All right, so you've just been watching a bunch of clips of me explaining stuff, so I'm gonna keep this one brief. Uh, I'm back a different day, got my GoPro, so hopefully we'll get some time lapses of me actually doing things rather than just updates constantly. But uh, I got exhaust headers that came in, which we're modifying, so I wanna show you that before I go and weld them all up. So, <clears throat> so right here, uh, I've got one clamped down and magneted in place uh it's just going to be a 90 degree bend let me see where i put the other one down here's the other one so they come a little bit longer i took about an inch and a quarter off the end of it so that it'll clear the belt when this goes in here so it's going to come down see how that's making contact with the belt the other one goes right up nice and flush um it's going to be a pain in the ass to get a nut on the bottom side of this on this because the the bend is so tight, but I'll figure something out on there. But then this side, I'm gonna leave unmodified because it's better for it to be a gradual transition. So, you know, I mean, I can't do it on both, but whatever. Um, so that's there. It's gonna go down and then hopefully they're long enough 
and it'll just mate right up to this exhaust pipe muffler right there. So that's what I'm planning. Uh, get that on the time lapse. So we've got both the headers on. <clears throat> uh, obviously this one sits out further than that one because I didn't cut the end off of it and it doesn't matter for clearance. So the more gradual the bend, the more heat gets dissipated away from the engine in the exhaust fumes. The tighter the bend, the more of the exhaust fumes heat will transfer to the metal. So. That's why, like, on Subarus, you know, you can get an unequal length headers, but a lot of the times it makes those cylinders that have the unequal lengths, the shorter length headers, um, it makes their pistons go bad quicker. So this isn't great, but uh, there's not really another option. I'm not redoing the entire engine placement and transmission to accommodate one exhaust pipe, and it's not a high-performance machine, so I'm not too concerned with it. Um, it's going to go down right now. It's just open to nothing. I got to get something. Uh, I've got a hydraulic tubing bender that just doesn't, you know, I'm not really sure how to work. It was donated by my brother-in-law, that thing. It's missing a part for it. So it kind of, I think it's a little bit overkill for what I'm trying to do here with a one and a quarter inch exhaust tube. Um, but it's got to be, this has got to be extended by another inch inch and a half down to where the muffler it would be nice if i could just mount the muffler directly in the middle down here and just shoot the exhaust out the back away from all the people on it because you want this to be a relatively quiet machine like a golf cart too um and this is not a quiet engine it's a 600 you know so you want it to be somewhat quiet maybe in the flip up seat, I'll build in like some soundproofing or something like that. So it keeps the engine below everything. That way you can drive and still have a conversation or at least at idle, you know, it's not screaming like it would be with open, open headers. All right. So let's probably end it for this video. Sorry. There wasn't a lot of building, just a bunch of updates constantly and me talking to a camera, but that's what I got. Um, I just got accepted a new job at working for Verizon as an engineer, so uploads will be even more few and far between, considering uh, I don't make any money off this. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.